How well do you know J.D. Vance? What do you think of the pick? Well, I, I like the pick. Obviously, being from Ohio, I really love the pick. And that's beside the point, I guess, in many ways. I got to know J.D. a little bit after he came out with the book. He lives near me in Ohio. And we had spent time together, especially while he was running for the Senate. So, you know, I got to know him pretty well. And a lot of people know his story. Some people don't. But here's a guy, he's like the Cinderella man. You know, he's gone from welfare to, to Wall Street. And he did it without winning a lottery ticket. You know, he did it by uh, going out, joining the Marines, deciding he wanted a different life. He grew up in poverty, raised by his grandmother. So many Americans today know that story, surrounded by addiction and instability within the home. But the Marines gave him a home. They gave him leadership. He served his country. He understands military and military life. That's an important component for leadership in the White House. And he goes on, goes to Ohio State University, Yale Law School. He's smart with street credibility. And, you know, one of the things that we see, and I'm very passionate about trying to lift people out of poverty, and here's someone who gets it. You know, we see Democrats, they talk a lot about just taxing the rich, but they don't really talk much about lifting people out of poverty. J.D. Vance has lived this experience, and we need that someone in, in leadership that understands that experience. It's not just something on paper for him. And same with military. You know, so he's okay. got the leadership skills. He knows the law. He's familiar with so many things that can be so helpful in that position as vice president. Well, if this ticket wins and he does indeed become vice president, he will be leaving open a leadership position in the United States Senate. Sir, is that a job you would go for? You know, I'm always willing to listen. You listen to your president. You listen to your governor. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what, what takes place. Uh, this is my last term in the House of Representatives. Uh, I've been uh, missing my family a little too much. When I first started, I had no children. Now I have two. Um, so we'll see. I've always been wanting to, uh, willing to serve my country whenever I could. And I joined the military in 1998. 9-11 happens. I spent a year in Iraq myself. And that led me to wanting to run for Congress because I looked at Washington, D.C. And I said, well, we got people running businesses that never ran a business. I started with my own practice then joined a large orthopedic group. Uh, I served in the military, just finished 25 years of service and uh, was serving at Walter Reed when I got elected. And, um, you know, I have that health background and those are all important things. So I do want to contribute in some way, shape or form, even after I leave the House of Representatives. Congressman, I want to ask you from your perch on the Intelligence Committee about security at this Republican National Convention. We heard earlier today from Alejandro Mayorkas, of course, the Secretary of Homeland Security, who said this about additional security around the gathering this week. At the RNC, we have steadily increased implementation of significant physical and technical enhancements at every protective venue in support of protectees. We are also leveraging strong relationships across the law enforcement community. We had an attempted assassination, Congressman, on Saturday. What is the threat level for this RNC? Well, I would hope that the RNC is very well controlled. I remember last time when it was in Cleveland, uh, you know, it was very well controlled. I felt safe wherever I was, and hopefully it's the same environment mm -hmm. here. You know, I am surprised that a young person could climb up on the top of a building and then take a shot at a president. I, you know, I, maybe it's my military training and, of course, the things that have happened to me in, in Congress, such as the shooting at the baseball field. But you tend to get tuned in on uh, where and when you should be seeking to make sure that you have the security that you need. And that's why when we practice baseball today, uh, we have plenty of security. Uh, it's, it's a shame it took an unfortunate yeah. incident to realize that. Uh, but I would think that in Milwaukee, it's, it's pretty good, because if it's anything like it was in Cleveland, uh, we should be in good shape. As we think about what happened this past weekend, it's also worth pointing out what Senator Vance's reaction was in the aftermath of the shooting, saying that the central premise of the Biden campaign is that President Trump is an authoritarian fascist who must be stopped at all costs. That rhetoric led directly to President Trump's attempted assassination. Now that he is a vice presidential nominee, does he need to be more careful with his language? Well, I think we all do. I mean, I think that uh, that's something that is of concern. And I've talked about this, for, you know, for some time. 
you know, when we saw people saying, members of Congress saying, go out there, get in their face. This is what people hear, and especially young, impressionable people. And if someone thinks they're going to be a hero because they do just that, that's a problem because it's not heroic and it should always be condemned. And uh, we've, we've had the opportunity to do that. And we blame it on the individual who, who carries out the act because you shouldn't be so influenced by someone's rhetoric, but that's the world that we're living in today. And, and, it, and it should be avoided. You know, Donald Trump was president before. Did he become a dictator then? I mean, he was no more of a dictator than any other president when it comes to, say, executive orders, et cetera. And, and what's the threat to democracy? Did democracy go away? No, but I'll tell you what we did have under Donald Trump. We had a more peaceful world than we have today. And that's one of the things that I think J.D. Vance uh, can understand and how we go about that. Mm. You know, when Trump was president, the North Koreans weren't firing missiles. There was conversations with the Chinese uh, and fighting back against their efforts. Putin did not invade Ukraine under the Trump administration, but he did under the Biden administration and under the Obama administration. And you saw things like the U.S. Okay. Mexico Canada agreement. I mean, that was that was a bipartisan yeah. event. You had unions behind it. This president is more of a uniter than he ever gets credit for.